My name is Rebecca Gray. I'm a Medical Research Council Fellow working in the Department of Zoology and the Institute of Emerging Infections, which is part of the Oxford Martin School. And together with the other members of my team, including Alan Pybus, we're interested in developing new methodologies that can help us understand the causes and the dynamics of emerging infectious diseases um, in all parts of the world. And in particular, we study hepatitis C virus, as well as West Nile virus, influenza, and other diseases that are of true public health concern. This video shows a reconstructed history of the spread of West Nile virus in the U.S. from its initial appearance in New York in 1999 across the U.S. until 2008. And this is based directly on the results of our study. This video is being played through time, and the time is kept track of at the top of your screen. So here we're going to start in 1999. Now these red branches represent the branches of the phylogeny that have been uh, reconstructed so that we can see them spatially on this map. The colors of the branches indicate the time. So these red branches that you see here are the earliest branches. As we progress through, they're going to become a darker blue, indicating that they happen later. You can also see these little clouds around each branch. And this represents the area of uncertainty in terms of space of where that virus actually was. So initially here, you can see we're in 2000. The virus starts up in the northeast, but it's already making its way down to Florida. And you can see it reaches Florida in about 2000. And by 2001, you can see that the virus has already made its long distance hops, two of them actually in fact, to Texas. So there was multiple long distance introductions from the Northeast into the Southwest. And as we continue to play the movie, you can see that the virus actually is doing something quite interesting over here in the southwest, where before it actually hits into California, it seems to tra traverse north and south along the Rocky Mountains before it enters California along this quite southern route and then extends up the coast of California. But you notice it's never going to cross north the Rocky Mountains in the Utah, Nevada area. And as we continue the movie, you can see that mostly now it's coming back in on itself into the Midwest and maintaining really quite local dynamics without any more of these long distance jumps. And so once again, that presents some testable hypotheses, particularly with regard to the Rocky Mountains, whether or not, for example, elevation plays a role in how this virus is spread. And so although we didn't test this directly, a um, sort of straightforward conclusion perhaps might be that long distance migrations of birds, which are a primary carrier of the virus, might be responsible for these long and quick migration events. Whereas in the smaller localized area, you probably have mosquitoes that are largely responsible for the dynamics there. And that then leads to a new study where we can then directly test different hypotheses of what is actually responsible for driving these long distance migration events. 